And welcome to the jungle here at Paulding High School on WOSN. It is Liberty Benton and Lima Bath here in a girls district division two semifinal. I'm Chris Malenga. My partner tonight is Brian Arnold. And Brian, these two teams, both tough teams, both good teams, one out of the WBL and one out of the BBC. Yeah, and huge traditions here on both of these teams. You got one of the best programs in the state of Ohio in terms of just program wins with the Lima Bath Lady Wild Kittens. You've got over 820 wins between the two coaches. Another 200 some with Todd Grosjean coming in in the second game. We've got two great games here tonight. And the leadoff here is probably one of the best matchups in a district semifinal, maybe in any division in the state. Absolutely. When you look at the Liberty Benton Eagles, they're coached by Nate Irwin. And as you said, uh, 382 wins here, 19th year. And they're on a 75-game conference win streak. Not too so shabby. That. Not too shabby, yeah. <laughs> and they are in the Blanchard Valley Conference, currently averaging 58.7 points per game, allowing 27.2. They're shooting 47% from the field, 35% from three, 63% from the free throw line and their last game to get here they defeated defiance 64 to 20 they went on a 17-0 run for the eagles to start the contest they were up 47 to 12 in the second half and Irvin and gherkin each scored 17 to lead the er, the uh, eagles gherkin notched a double double grabbing 11 rebounds as well so you know liberty benton easy to punch their ticket here yeah and that's the one thing that you, you look at their schedule look at some things um as far as competition goes, they were in a ball game back on February 4th. They're in a five-point ball game. They lost to Fort Laramie, who's a, a Division Four powerhouse. But a lot of games, other than that, all the way back to the Bryan game on the 28th of January, haven't been real close. So, you know, haven't seen the level of bath in a while. It'll be interesting to see how they handle them and their physicality. You know, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how Liberty Benton handles that early when they haven't seen that kind of ball lately. Bath is coming in at 19-4, and 7-2 and two in the Western Buckeye League. Greg Malk is in his 25th season here at Bath. They're currently averaging 44.4 points per game, allowing 31.2. They're shooting 41% from the field, out-rebounding their opponents 25-22. They're turning the ball over 12 times while forcing 17. And to get here, they defeated Shawnee. 34-22. It was the 11th time this season Bath held an opponent under 30 points. And uh, Ann Oliver and Rachel Clark each had 12 for the Wild Kittens. So Bath, uh, no slouch here in this game. No, I, and I haven't seen Bath since the QP Classic early in the year. Uh, the Brian Lady Bears played Bath down there, and they pretty much slapped a glove on us that night too. You know, that's one of the things you're, you're going to see from them. We've seen from every WBL team is some physicality, not afraid to bang a little bit and get into you defensively. So I think the Bass really going to lean on that. You, know, you look at who they are, and right now starting a freshman, next two, three players out of the next two or three players off the bench, you got a couple of freshmen that are coming in. So I'll be interested to see. Coach Malk talked about how they handle a tournament atmosphere. I think he's probably talking a lot to that inexperience in youth and how are they going to handle the moment. Absolutely. Well, we are, except for this one, it's Bath and Liberty Benton here from the jungle in Balding. Want to let you know there's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to bring it to you. Say thanks to viewers supported TB44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TB44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click the donate button. Going to take this time out. Come back with Bath LB after this on WOSN Sports. And welcome back to the Jungle Paulding High School. At Bath Liberty Benton getting set to tip off. Let's uh, meet our starting lineups first for the uh, Bath Wild Kittens. They're 19 and 4, 7 and 2 in the Western Buckeye League. They're going to start the following: a 5'2 freshman number two, Faith Clark; a 5'5 senior number 20, Rachel Clark; a 6'1 junior number 22, Claire Faust; a six foot junior number 32, Ann Oliver; and a six foot senior number 33, Elena Oliver. Three leading scorers for uh, Bath are Elena Oliver, Ann Oliver, and Claire Faust. Meanwhile, the Liberty Benton Eagles are going to go this direction. They are 21 and 2, 9 and 0 in the BBC. They're going to start a 6'3 senior, number two, Karis Willow, a 5'7 senior, number 10, Kylie Recker, a 5'7 senior, number 11, Riley Irwin, a 6' foot junior, number 23, Lauren Gherkin, and a 5'7 junior, number 25. 
Addy Crow. The uh, Lady Eagles are being led by Lauren Gherkin, who's averaging 19.7 points per game, and Irwin, 14.7 points per game. And Chris Malang and Brian Arnold here with you on WSN. And Brian, one of the things that we've talked about in the past, you and I, about the the fact that the five starters, out of the five starters, four are going to play sports at the next level. Yeah, I think if you look at that Liberty Benton starting lineup, you get a little intimidated by Willow going to Penn State to play volleyball. Gherkin's committed already to play bo- or basketball at Bowling Green. Coach Irwin's daughter, Riley, is committed to go play basketball at Tiffin. And then you've got a soccer player thrown in the mix yeah. there with uh, Kylie Recker, who's going to go to Finley to play soccer. So not a lot of slouches as far as athletes go on either team, but that Liberty Benton starting lineup is uh, full of a, of a lot of accolades there. Absolutely, and it's going to be a good game. We're going to see Karis Willow tipping off in center. And she is going to face off. And the tip goes to them. That was uh, Claire Faust. Quickly, the Eagles have it. See Bath starting a little bit of a zone. A good quick look for Gherkin. And a big board there by Karis Willow. Yeah, then Willow. Right away, that height shows up. Yep, Willow drew the contact there and is going to head to the line. Karis Willow is 59% from the line. And that's something Bath really can't afford. They don't want to get into a lot of foul trouble, especially early trying to deal with the bigs from Liberty Benton. Time now for free throws being sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Next one for Willow is up and good, so that makes a one nothing lead. And, and a really a positive possession there for Liberty Benton to start. They got a good look from the elbow for their leading score. Nice offensive rebound by Willow. Got on the board and able to slow, slam on the press here. They get it down the other way. Shot is missed by Faust. She gets her own rebound, and then it gets another shot missed, and it heads out of bounds. So nice heads-up play there, Faust getting her own rebound. Yeah, good job by Bath breaking that pressure there, the 2-2-1. Got a good look twice there for Faust, not able to finish, but Bath saves the possession. Now they'll have it. Driving and giving out is Faith Clark. And getting a zone, another look at a zone on this end of the floor here from Liberty Benton playing their, their own 2-3 against Bath. Wild Kittens go baseline. Shot is up and good. And that is Ann Oliver. So patient there for the Wild Kittens. Yeah, and got into the got into the zone there and went up against the big 6-3 shot blocker and able to get her jump shot off over her. Underneath to Willow, then underneath. Shot is missed. Rebound picked up again. That was uh, Gherkin who missed that. But the rebound will stay here with the Eagles. And there's Karis Willow again and doing what she does on that baseline. Yeah, great find there by Lauren Gherkin. Nice job by her keeping her head up. She missed a couple of shots at point blank. Just kept battling. And nice job getting position against the top of the bath zone and found Willow with the baseline cut. Bath with Rachel Clark here. They get it underneath. Shot is up and good. That's Elena Oliver. The six-foot senior puts it up and in. And now the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows 4-3 in favor of Bath. Great seal there by Faust, I think it was, for Bath against Willow in the middle of that zone. Three ball in the air for LV is no good. The rebound comes down to Willow, and Willow puts it up and good. She's got all five. Yeah, she's really active early. Crow's three was down and came back out again. But another offensive rebound and put back for Karis Willow. Bath able to get past the pressure. Dish out to Faith Clark. He'll feed it now underneath to Rachel Clark. Rachel Clark drives, finds underneath. Shot is missed. I think Karis Willow had something to say about that. LB coming the other way. Fast break opportunity up and good. And that was Kylie Recker. Oh, that was Irwin, excuse me. Yeah, nice job attacking the bigger Bath defender right there. Just used her quickness and athleticism to get around her. We've seen Willow be effective on both ends, both scoring the points and altering shots for Bath. Yeah, Here's Ann Oliver and another block. Another block. That's a couple blocks already. She's got five points already. Really, really active right now, helping Liberty Benton out a ton. So, El- so uh, Bath will inbound under the their own basket. Rachel Clark will do the honors. She gets it in to Elena Oliver. And we had a chance to see Liberty Benton earlier in the year. This is what we saw out of them. They're happy to sit in this zone and kind of let you 
whittle some time down there. They're big on that back line. Nothing's going to be real easy. They're going to make you work for everything. Drive shot is missed by Ann Oliver. Rebound comes down. And wow, lots of contact down there. And now they're going to get the foul going this way. And I think uh, Claire Faust might argue that <laughs> she was not the victim yeah, of a foul. Yeah, she thought she might have got one, but that's two on Ann Oliver already. So, so we're going to see Coach Mock's going to his bench. We're going to see uh, Kelsey Carlson come in for the Wild Kittens. You know, talking to the bath coaches, they said we probably wouldn't see a very deep bench, just a couple of subs, both freshmen. And this is a freshman off the bench right away in a big moment in the tournament. Playing against a bunch of seniors on the other side. Yeah. Record now we'll see. It, I tell you, Chris, this is, it looks to be, I guess we're going man trying to face guard Irwin and face guard Gherkin on this. Gherkin had it and gave it over to Wrecker. Top of the key, now back to Wrecker. Wrecker launches a three. That is in and out. Rebound comes down, and a nice job by Bath uh, boxing the defenders out. Yeah, and that, I'll tell you that, I'd like to see that a second time. I'm not so sure that wasn't a triangle and two on Gherkin and Irwin right there once coach had to go a little bit smaller. Cross courted over to Clark. Underneath, trying good to spin around. High post. Three ball is no good. Rebound comes down to Bath, and just too tall. Karis Willow down there, and now we're going to get another foul. And twice now, Willow's grabbed the rebound, and twice now there's been a foul. Yeah, a little bit of frustration there out of out of both bigs from Bath after another missed three. As a I think they called that on Elena Oliver, her first. Another block shot down there that yep. time from Karis Willow. Was, I mean, we've said it a couple times, now they're going to catch her for an offensive yep. foul. So that'll be her first foul. They're, I don't know if they were calling a movement screen there just to push, but. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if she got caught up with the defender, but she's the one who caught the whistle. That'll put them in a full court press as Bath will try to break it. Here's Rachel Clark trapped, and now we're gonna get a foul. Oh, they're gonna say she stepped on the line without a foul. Yeah, the Liberty Bend defender came up to take the sideline away, and the official called Clark dribbling on the sideline. I'm sure Coach Mock and the Bath contingent would have liked to seen some body on that. Coach Mock speaking with the official. Willow will launch an off-balance shot. Rebound will come down to Rachel Clark of Bath, and she's running. Clark has it, will dribble, find the trailing player, and. Right back to Clark. Clark will look to drive now. Puts it in the hands of Claire Faust, who misses the shot. But this time, she will get a foul. And that's going to be on Karis Willow. And that's going to be two on Willow. Yeah, two on her now. So a little return to the favor right there. Great find. Good penetration in the middle of the zone. Really easy for Clark and a great leave for Faust. Faust is a 65% foul shooter. First one for her is no good. And she's dealing with 6-3 in there, and there's nothing fun about that. But she's got a lot of touches so far inside the blocks and hasn't been able to capitalize. That's going to be a big deal in this game if she can get going because they've gotten her some good looks. Second one's good. Free throws tonight being sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. And Willow's got those couple of fouls, but she's also a little bit gassed over there. She's probably welcome the break minus the two fouls. LB looking to move it around. Barbera comes in for Willow. Wrecker gives to Barbera. Now back top of the key, Addie Crow. Shot is blocked. Rebound will come down to Claire Faust. Faust will clear, and Rachel Clark will bring it up. Yeah, I think, Chris, right now we see which one of these teams has changed the most. Nice jump shot there At from the, the free throw line. line. Elena Oliver puts it up and good. Which one of these two teams changes the most with their big on the bench? And it definitely impacts Liberty Benton taking Willow out of the middle of that 2-3 with her three blocks and rebounds already. Double dribble for LB. That'll be a turnover for them. And the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows 7-7. Seven and seven. Your complete automotive experience at competitive prices, Finley Truck and RV. Quickly, Bath gets around, works around a screen. Now they kick out. Cross court over to Elena Oliver. Oliver will come in, put up a shot, no good. Rebound tipped, and it'll go into the hands of... Riley Irwin. And I like to see how Rachel Clark beats that press. She just kind of gets it into high gear and goes and cuts right through the middle of that, is able to get Bass offense up and running pretty quickly. She just puts her head down and goes. Yeah. In the corner for, ba for LB to Wrecker. Now in the middle for Gherkin. Gherkin at the foul line. 
steps back, jumper good, beautiful, and you can see why she's going to go play at the next level. Yeah, because she's really, she's having to work really hard to find the ball and to get any kind of separation. She created her own with a little bit of a step back right there from about 17 feet. Oliver will bring the basketball open, cross it over to the freshman Clark, get it underneath, now back out to Clark. Clark will find top of the key to Rachel Clark, makes a nice move, puts it up and in, tie ball game. Nice move, I'm not sure there wasn't an extra step in there, but really nice job by Clark. And she is go, we talked about just a second ago, she is go, penetration, go attack the basket, and it's making good things happen right now for the Wild Kittens. Another three ball is no good. Rebound will come down to Bath. And Bath is running. They get it over to Rachel Clark. Clark will cross the timeline, work into a double team. And now Irwin gives it and goes back to the zone defense. Yeah, back into their 2-3. They're kind of happy to let the ball stay out on the perimeter. They're trying to pack the lane the best they can, but that's really where Bass had a lot of luck. Kelsey Carlson tries to get it over to Rachel Clark and turns it over. So under a minute to play here, we got a tie ball game. This is everything we expected and more. Yeah, and be, like I said, a couple of couple of girls in foul trouble. We'll see how both teams adjust. Bass really making life hard on Irwin and Gherkin to find the ball and get any kind of separation. Nice move there. Barbera puts it up and no, it rattles in and out. Irwin found her down low there. And if Irwin and Gherkin are going to have to work that hard to find shots and get open, then some of the others are going to have to step up and knock down some shots. And you know, I think Barbera had a good look at it. That ball was partially down and came back out. That's two for Liberty Benton now. Rachel Clark has the basketball, looks like. Bath is content to dribble this out and wait for a final shot here in the first quarter. Yeah, with the situation, I think Coach Malk has a lead or tied here going to the second quarter. He's going to be plenty happy. They go right side over to Elena Oliver. Now they'll go baseline. Shot is blocked. Turn around, put back no good, and we're going to get a foul. Oh, we whistled a foul as time expired. Yeah, I'm not sure. But that'd be really close. I think if we were in the NBA, we'd be checking the clock on that. All right, so there is a foul. So that means Elena Oliver will get a chance to put two in here. Two more Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That one is up and good. Next one coming, and that's a 11-9 lead now for Bath at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with more after this on WSN. Back out on WSN, our scoreboard tonight being presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And that Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows 11 to nine in favor of Bath, two free throws after time expired. And Bath got a two point lead. Chris Malenga, Brian Arnold here with you on WSN. Thanks for joining us. I think what stands out to me early right here is how, how Bath is able to match up with the size on the back line of the Liberty Benton 2-3 zone. Willow caused a lot of problems, but she's still seated with those two fouls right now. And Bath has not looked away from the post. They're still trying to pound it in to Oliver, to both Olivers and to Faust. Clark has it now. And again, you saw that just as Brian said, they tried to get into Elena Oliver and it came right back out. What would be interesting here is if Bath can start shooting some outside shots and there's a tall three, no good. That would break up the press just a little bit, or the uh, zone just a little bit. Right, they're going to have to probably knock down a couple of those shots to at least make the, the wings and the top two players in the zone extend a little. Irwin has it, loses the basketball, stolen away, and Clark will bring it up. Clark doesn't stop, layup under the basket. She got too far under, but it's going to stay right here. Yeah. And we've got a player down. Ran out of real estate right there at the angle she was attacking. Kirch Irwin is not happy with the out of bounds call. Ann Oliver will check back in. Looks like Elena Oliver is trying to walk off a little bit of something there. She went down in the lane. Was a little slow getting up. She's a little gimpy going back to the other end. On that replay, I didn't see anything conclusive as to who that went off of. It probably went off of both of them at some point. Yeah, officials work together. I You'd imagine if another official's coming and changing it, he feels 100% confident that he saw it. LB just moving around, trying to get it underneath to Barbera. 
that Lauren Gherkin just stepped, they just stepped in front of Lauren Gherkin's pass. Well, she's drawing a lot of eyes yep. right now. She's going to get, if she's not getting 10 eyes on her, she's getting eight eyes on her every time she's got the basketball. She's drawing a lot of company. So she's just going to have to be ready for that all night long. Everyone's going to know where she is and make life hard on her. And Oliver feeds it underneath to Claire Faust. Faust misses, rebound knocked out of bounds, and will stay. Nope, oh, but it's going to go to Liberty Benton. A good crash by both Oliver and Faust there. Barbera in the middle of that is going to have to get a body on somebody because they both came hard from about the free throw line to go after that offensive board. Wrecker will bring it up. Barbera has it. We'll hand off to Riley Irwin. Now they go into the corner. Barbera go at the right block. A streaking LB player. And was that that was Wrecker, and she lost the basketball. They're going to say it went off of a wild kitten. It's probably right either here. that or a foul, and they go without the foul call and just called it out of bounds. Wrecker looks to inbound. She finds uh, Lauren Gherkin, who puts it up right on the right block. That'll tie the game back up on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard out at 11. Chris, I don't remember what it was exactly, but I knew that day when Brian played Liberty Benton on that Saturday, I bet Liberty Benton got 8-10 to 10 off of out-of-bounds plays for easy jumpers to Lauren Gherkin, and there was another one right there. Four shots now for, for Bath, and the, the fourth one made it. Yeah, I don't know if Coach Irwin can go a whole lot longer with Karis Willow on the bench. Bath's kind of having their way down there on the offensive glass. It's a completely different team without her there. It's changed things huge, Absolutely. you're right. Crow with the basketball will feed it over to Irwin. Irwin launches a long three. That is no good, but put back for Gherkin is no good. It goes out of bounds, and it's going to stay right here. That almost ended up being a perfect pass to Gherkin. <laughs> she was probably surprised. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't been that open all night long. They get it in. Three ball in the air for Irwin is no good. Rebound will come down to Bath, and there's one of those out of bounds plays. You were talking about quick out of bounds, quick, yeah. quick shot. I thought Liberty Benton did a great job that day, creating good quick shots all day and then used that offense in what ended up being a three or four point ball game to be the difference. We're going to get a traveling violation there. So that'll be another turnover for Bath. Been relatively clean so yep. far. Three turnovers for both teams. Um, that's more coming from defense than just silly things. Just like you'd expect, two really, really good teams, good programs. Well coached, they're going to be fundamentally sound, not going to beat themselves. And Oliver did, is out again, did a good job not picking up another foul while she was in there. Eagles with it, Kylie Recker has it, will get downtown to Barbera, she launches a bucket, no good, rebound comes down, and Lauren Gherkin did a great job almost completely against that box out, but just let her escape to get the rebound. Yeah, and that's one of those, I mean, I've said it already once, I think, the, the others, the, the not Riley Irwins, not Karis Willow, not Lauren Gherkin are going to have to show up and score some points here for Coach and Irwin's her, team. Here's Irwin that strips, uh, or steps in front of a pass and puts the bucket up. And that's the easiest look she's got. Great job by her anticipating. Bath player went, took off as the pass was thrown. And a great job getting out on that and finishing the layup. And Coach Mock wants a timeout. Out of town, can't get WOSN. WOSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. We'll be back after this on WOSN. Back out on WOSN 13-13, 4-11 remaining in the second quarter. Today's free throw is being brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Good game so far, 13-13. We knew this would be good. Number one, Liberty Benton. Number three, Bath. And it's been everything is advertised. Yeah, Liberty Benton continues to leave Willow on the bench right now. I think Coach Irwin's happy as long as this game is tied or close or he's got an advantage. I think he's going to try to let her sit as long as possible and save her and any potential fouls for the second half. Absolutely. Rachel Clark has it on the left wing. She now no look passes over to Faith Clark. Now back to Rachel. Now underneath. Now right back out to Rachel Clark. I think Bath's happy to leave this close and not let it be any type of blowout. They're happy right now to just be patient, get a good shot. 
Yeah, there's and, not urgency because you, you're down or. Right, you talked about their last game. They played that in the 30s and the 20s. They're they're not. They don't have any problem with playing a low-scoring ball game here and just trying to be efficient on offense and physical on defense. They feed it underneath. Now back out. Now top of the key. Clark is thinking about a three. Now she finds player underneath. It's up and good. That is Claire Faust. That was real patience there. She could have taken a three. She could have. She, she thought about it twice. Yep. <laughs> and then she threw that pass about the only place Faust could go get it. Caught it just in her fingertips. Oh, and we got a double dribble as Kylie Recker will turn it over. The 5'7 senior doesn't do that very often. No, that's an unforced error that you don't expect to see. So Bath will take it out over here on the near sideline. And they're playing with a two-point lead. Faith Clark has it on the right side, and this is just how they've been playing the 2-3 zone. Yeah, no reason. If, if Liberty Benton's going to stay back inside the three-point line and let you burn some time and, and eat up some possessions, there's really no reason for Bath to force anything. Faith Clark has it. Now cross-court it to Rachel Clark. They're trying to get their post player free, Claire Faust, and they do get her free now. She has to dish it quickly. Underneath, nice backdoor cut up and good. I tell you what, Another the great patience find. there for Claire yeah. Faust. And that's going to be a timeout for Kurt Irwin. He's seen enough of that. Yeah, Look at this replay right here. All starts with the penetration. Every time Clark's been able to get the ball in the middle, it's led to good things and nice touches for Bath. All right. We're going to take a quick timeout. 17-13 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Bath on top. Back after this. Back out here at Paulding here on WSN. Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold with you. It is a good one here as Bath and Liberty Benton doing battle here. And Bath so far a four-point lead. Ooh, nearly a travel there. LB looks a little out of sorts. Lauren Gherkin has it now. Will cross-court it. Now in the corner to Barbera. Barbera will give to Riley Irwin top of the key. And now Wrecker has it. Gives to Barbera. She'll drive. Put up a shot. No good. Rebound comes down to Bath. Try to draw a little bit of body there and didn't get the whistle. And Irwin and Gherkin are just having to battle really hard against what I, I can't call it anything other than a triangle and two. And you got to give a lot of credit to the freshman guard for Bath, Faith Clark. She has been hounding Riley Irwin everywhere she goes. She has the basketball right now on the right wing. Looking to get underneath to Elena Oliver. They do. Oliver will spin. Make a move, put up a shot. It is no good. Rebound comes down to Gherkin. And that's, that's the first one and done Bass had in a while. They've exactly. been getting their hands on a lot of second chances here. Good rebound by Gherkin on the backside. Gherkin has it now. They'll cross court it over to Addie Crow. Crow gives back to Gherkin. Now they find Kylie Recker down low. Recker will scoop it underneath. Barbera puts up a shot. It's blocked. Rebound comes down to Bath. Wow. Good defense there by the by the Wild Kittens. And again, Crow had a really good look there from about 10 feet on the baseline and didn't want anything to do with that jump shot. So Bath again, they did this at the end of the first quarter. Happy to dribble things out here. They have a four-point lead right now, and we talked about this in the past, you and I, about high school shot clocks. Um, um, always be a proponent. <laughs> absolutely, because right now we're just dribbling things around and but with the game that you've got, and yep. you have a four-point lead, you're Coach Greg Malk. You've been through 600 games yep. at this point. <laughs> I mean, you, you know what you're doing, and you know what it's going to take to win against an opponent like Liberty Benton. And right now, if you can take this four-point lead in and possibly get another bucket, you're going to be as happy as you could be. Faith Clark has it. Now they give it over to Claire Faust. Underneath, too tall, knocked out of bounds. They're going to say it's going to LB, and they have basically two seconds, so inbound and fire a shot. Yeah, and they did. They used as much of the clock almost as they could. You're going to make it really hard for Liberty Benton to get anything good going. And that is no good. So at halftime here, it is Bath 17, LB 13. We're going to take a timeout, come back with our halftime report here on WOSN.
Halftime here on WOSN. It is Bath 17, Liberty Benton 13. Chris Malenga, Brian Arnold with you on the West Ohio Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us. And Brian, when you look at this uh, game, obviously we thought this was going to be a close game, thought this was going to be a good game. What are the keys for each team going into the second half here? Let's start with Liberty Benton, who's down by four here at the half. Well, I think right now they've got to get Irwin and Gherkin open. They've got to find a way if Coach Malk's going to stay with that triangle in two. Hope, I would imagine they spent some time talking about running those two off of as many screens as they can, coming up with whatever you can. You're, not, you're just not ready for gimmicky defenses. So that was a big part of the halftime adjustment is how do we get our two main scores open. Then the other people have got to knock some shots down. We've seen other girls get looks, whether it's been Crow or – Barbera or anybody else, they need to score. And Willow was doing that when she was in the game. She's going to have to be a factor, and they got a rebound. I thought, especially when Willow went out with their second foul, Bath really took control on the offensive boards, and they got to limit those second chances. All right, so Bath is up by four. Coach Malk is probably very happy with this uh, score. What do they need to do? Well, I think at this point, they just got to keep pounding the glass. They have done a great job using their size and their physicality to own the glass at this point, and that's been a huge factor for them. Uh, they're working hard against that 2-3 zone to find their post, and that's been good for them. When Willow was in, obviously, that changed things a little, but I think you could probably go high-low like Coach Malk was looking at when Willow was in there, take the 15-foot jumper, and if she has to step out, then go find your girl that's underneath. And, in fact, I thought the Lady Bears did that well against the 2-3 zone in the second half with Void and Thiel uh, when we played Liberty Benton. And then youngsters have been good so far. I was really curious about how freshmen would handle it. I think Coach Malk was curious when he talked about how they'd handle the tournament atmosphere atmosphere. Faith Clark's been fantastic. She's made life just miserable for Riley Irwin in the first half, chasing her around in face garden. And then the other two, Carlson and McDermott coming off the bench, haven't hurt them. They don't have to come in and score 15 or 20 points. They just got to come in and don't hurt us. And they've been able to do that so far. So lean on your posts. Uh, just keep getting the good, uh, the good effort and the good production you've been getting from the young kids. And you know, I think Coach Mock's got a formula working right here that could finish this game for him. All right, going to take a timeout, come back with second half action as Bath leads Liberty Benton 17-13 here on WOSN. Back out at Paulding, the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard tonight being presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And that scoreboard right now shows Bath, the Wild Kittens, on top of the Liberty Benton Eagles by a score of 17 to 13. Here as we start the third quarter of action here on WOSN. Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold with you on this one. Been a great game so far. We'll see what changes maybe LB makes here in the second half. We do see Karis Willow back in. How long she stays in will be how quickly she picks up another foul. Yeah, and, and I think at this point, being down four and struggling the way Liberty Benton was, I don't think Coach Irwin can afford to sit her a whole lot, even if foul trouble becomes an issue for her. They do get it in underneath to her. She'll go baseline, put up a reverse layup. It's no good. Rebound will come down to Bath. Nice work there by Elena Oliver to grab that one. A really good move. Willow trying to get aggressive. She was aggressive offensively in the first half. Real good move, just not able to finish on that reverse layup. Underneath and right back out to Faith Clark. Now they give to Ann Oliver. Now back to Elena Oliver. Now top of the key to Rachel Clark. And again, I think if you're Bath, you're not rushing anything. You're just looking for quality possessions. Yeah, make sure every possession ends with a shot. And if it ends with a good shot, that's even better. But, you know, neither team was real sloppy with the ball. Bath only had four turnovers in the first half. So they did a pretty good job taking care of it against this Liberty Benton press and zone defense. Elena Oliver has it on the right wing. She's working against Wrecker. Now they cross court it over to Rachel Clark. They get it underneath and then, wow, able to get it out of there as they hit the deck. Three ball in the air is no good for Rachel Clark. And Bath again has control of it. So second chance opportunities here for Bath have been good tonight. Yeah, and that's something we talked about coming in. Liberty Benton has got to find a way to keep the Bath bigs off the boards, limit these second chances. Shot is blocked by Willow. That was Ann Oliver tried to take that one. Willow just stuck a hand in it. She is a factor. She was a, she was controlling this game through about the first half to a little bit more of the first quarter, and then she picked up her second foul and sat the rest of the first half. So she's got to be a difference maker right now for Coach Irwin's squad. Underneath to Gherkin. 
Now back to Willow. Willow puts it up. No good. Rebound knocked out of bounds. No, they're going to call a foul. They're going to pick up uh, Lauren Gherkin with a foul. Yeah, the, the, fa the famous call from the stands, the over the back there. She's just pushing from behind, just trying to get something going. You can, Gherkin isn't. She's seen a lot of basketball. She's seen a lot of defenses, but this bath defense has been pretty solid tonight. She's got to work hard to not get frustrated. Elena Oliver breaks the press. Now they give it underneath to Izzy or Ann Oliver. Puts up a shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Gherkin. We've seen Gherkin on the boards really change games when she's on. Underneath, Willow up, no good. Rebound comes down to Bath, and Willow will just take it away. That'll be a jump ball, and we'll stay, go to Bath. Coach Irwin asking for a little bit of contact there on that shot, but that's that's three looks and three possessions for Willow, not able to capitalize yet, but you can see right away where Coach Irwin's trying to go with the ball, knowing that his top two scorers, Irwin and Gherkin, are being taken away by the Bath defense. They break the press. Clark will go all the way down, tries to throw it off of a LB player, but Gherkin able to step in front of it. Now Gherkin's going through the middle of the key. Cross over to Crow, who launches one no good. Rebound will come down to Bath. And I think the difference here in the second half has been first, uh, second chance points against one shot and done. Yeah, yeah, both teams doing a little bit better on the defensive end, and somebody somebody else for Liberty Benton's got to score. Irwin and Gherkin are just are not going to get free looks. That's just the way it's going to be the remainder of the way. Bath has settled in that defense. Going to make life hard on both of them. So somebody else has got to find the bottom of the net for the Eagles. Three minutes gone already and not a point here in the second half. Bath has the basketball. Wrecker will come up to start that five-second clock. She gets free. Then bounce pass over to Rachel Clark. Clark will look to drive now. Gets bumped on the way in. Loses the basketball. Hits the deck and Gherkin will pick it up. And after four turnovers in the first half, that's two in back-to-back -back possessions for the Wild Kittens. And Liberty Benton stretched the defense out for the first time tonight, really extended their guards out and tried to pressure the ball up top a little bit more than what they have been. Tried to get into Willow and got tipped right back, and Gherkin just walked with the basketball. Three ball in the air is no good. Rebound comes down, and underneath, shot is missed. It's going to go off of... Great hustle there yeah, by Willow, Karis saving Willow that possession. It. Knocked it right off of Ann Oliver. And that gets, that is 0 for 8 from 3 for Liberty Benton at this point. Just can't get anything going. Durkin steals the pass away as the pass, it was intercepted. The inbound was intercepted by Ann Oliver. Durkin just took it away and then put up a shot and was fouled as she was doing so. And that's the third foul on Ann Oliver right there. That's a big one for the Wild Kittens. First one is no good. Free throws tonight being sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Gherkin is a 77% free throw shooter. Next one is coming. That one is good. Just so, five for her right now, coming in averaging almost 20. I'm a little bit of a broken record, but that bath defense has just been phenomenal to this point. We've got a timeout called by Coach Mock as uh, two of the LB defenders were tying up or in the process of tying up that basketball. We're going to take a timeout back after this on WSN. Back out at Paulding High School, the jungle here, and this is a good basketball game. It's Bath 17, Liberty Benton 14 here on WSN. Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold with you. Bath took a 17-13 lead into the second half, or into halftime rather. Just one point scored so far. Shot is up and blocked by Karis Willow, and the difference in the game has been Willow. She sat for much of the first half after picking up two quick fouls. And I think that's, I haven't been tracking it, but that's got to be at least five block shots for her at this point. Pro misses the shot. She, she had a wide open look to the basket. She decided to pass off to Willow, and then Willow ran into traffic and gave it right back to her. And I just think that if she had gone, she might have got a bucket out of that one. Yeah, and this is the game plan for Bath. It's easy to see. They're going to make anybody but the three bigs beat you. And that's been working so far. And another block shot for Willow. She might have got two, two of them in that possession. Two in that possession. Yep. 
She's a difference maker when she's out here. She's got to stay on the floor if Liberty Benton's going to have a chance. LB has the basketball. They go left side to Addie Crow. Crow feeding underneath to Willow. Willow puts up a shot. No good. Rebound comes down to Bath. Bath has done a real great job here in limiting shots to one per possession. And that's another opportunity for Willow catching it down deep, just not able to get the finish. They go underneath. Shot is blocked again out of bounds. It'll stay right here. And she is definitely just changing things. I don't know that heading to the, the hole is going to be the the right thing to do for LB. No, but if you're Bath, you've got to continue. That's your offense. Yep. you got to continue to pound it in there, and hopefully you'll get a friendly whistle at some point, get her in a little bit more foul trouble. And it's not hurting you on the other end at this point, so you might as well stick with the game plan. Underneath, shot is up and good. There is Claire Faust. And there's the adjustment right yep. there. Don't go into her, go away from her. Just a sweet little turnaround jumper there for the junior, and she's got seven. Bath lead is five now. LB comes the other way. Here's Riley Irwin to Wrecker, now underneath to Willow. Willow puts up a shot, it is good. Willow with kind of a hook shot there. Yeah, nice little, little sky hook there, bringing back some old oh, school Dr. 70s J. look, yeah. <laughs> poked out, but able to pick it up is Rachel Clark, and she takes it all the way into the corner. Now she'll go baseline and can't handle it as she was trying to find uh, Ann Oliver. I tell you what, Rachel Clark's got one speed, and it's not a speed I've ever known. That's, yes. She is fast, and she can get the ball through some, through some trouble in a hurry. That time, try to go with that baseline baseball pass and just a little bit too hot to hold on to in the corner. And she had it poked away and still able to chase up and pick it up. LB coming down the other way. Irwin will launch a three. That's no good. Rebound comes down. And I'm impressed with the offense or the defensive glass for Lima Bath. Definitely limiting opportunities down there. And that... Irwin probably didn't know what to do. That's the first time she hasn't been wearing Clark's jersey on the offensive end all night long. Three-point lead now for Bath. They come inside in the key. Turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound comes down. Shot is blocked, and it'll get picked up by Willow. And the fast break opportunity right now for Liberty Benton. Three balls in the air, and that's good. We got There's the first one. Ball. That's the one they've been waiting for. Somebody else had to knock something down. Maddie Crow hits her first three, the first three of the night for Liberty Benton. Ties the ball game up and then a turnover from Bath. Yeah. You can feel some momentum right now for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> as much as you're going to get in 19 to 19 in the third. Absolutely. And Bath was just trying to hurry that one up because of the pressure defense and just threw it out of bounds. Yeah, and Liberty Benton doesn't run that press for turnovers. They run it just to kind of speed you up and make sure that they got a time, make time to get back. Another three ball for Irwin is good. And now a three point lead for Liberty Benton. And that's Irwin's first hit. Sometimes, you know, Chris, we've talked about it before watching the Bryan girls play. Sometimes you just gotta see one go through the net. Even if it's not yours, you just gotta know that thing works. So a six point swing right here on the last two possessions for Liberty Benton. Faith Clark looks to drive and she will get a push foul, and that'll be on Kylie Recker. You can see that's one adjustment that uh, Coach Irwin's made with the defense up at halftime as we've, we've extended now. We're going to step out. We're going to go try to find the guards and make life hard. In the first half, this was go ahead and pound the ball and dribble for 20 seconds if you wanted to, and now the LB guards are not letting that happen. They get it underneath. Shot is blocked. Now we're getting a foul on Karis Willow. That'll be three on her. Yeah, maybe a little bit of body Liberty on that. Two, she's been able to play this entire half here right down to the end with those two fouls just now picking up her third. So she's still in a pretty good spot, and she's challenging a lot of shots. She is. Faust at the line. First one for her is no good. Three throws again, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima Wapak, and Delphus. Call them for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken, home style, happens here. That next one is no good. Comes down to LB. Let's see if they can tack some on here at the end of that quarter. They give it to Willow. They get it underneath, and we're gonna get a we're gonna get a no shot, no nothing. That was it. All right, end of the third quarter, 22-19. Liberty Benton takes the lead, gonna take this time out, come back with more after this on WOSN.
Back out here at the jungle, Paulding High School. It is Liberty Benton 22-19. First lead for Liberty Benton comes at the end of the third quarter. And uh, you feel the momentum shifting just a little bit here. And you can see a little more confidence, a little more bounce in the step at Liberty Benton, even defensively the last couple of possessions. And I think it all started with having Karis Willow in there that whole third quarter. It made a huge difference on both ends of the floor for Liberty Benton. Six point swing, they were down three, now they're up three. Karis Willow turns, puts up a hook shot, no good, rebound comes down to Bath. Let me tell you, the one thing that you see that's different with Liberty Benton, when they dump it into the post, the Bath guards are not diving down to go help because you can't leave shooters on the perimeter, especially Gherkin and Irwin. Shot so is Willow's blocked. getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one looks down there. Shot is blocked out of bounds. That's Anna Oliver. And Willow is just a force in that, that mid post. Oliver has it now. We'll hand back off to Clark. Clark fires over to Faith Clark. Now they get underneath. Player Faust. Faust will spin, put up a shot. That is good. That's Ann Oliver. Excuse me, 32. 32, not 22. Good move right there. She went right at the shot blocker right there, and that's what they have to do. You're going to have to force that fourth foul, force that fifth foul. Otherwise, Willow's going to adjust this game the rest of the round. Irwin buries another three. She's had three in a row. She's hit the last two for Liberty Benton. And now Irwin's going to pick up a block foul. Just her first. Team's fourth. Probably the only thing that a little concerning about that. But definitely have picked up the defensive intensity the Lady Eagles have. They're not letting Bath do just what they want, passing the ball around. They're coming out challenging every, yeah, every pass. Yeah, forcing the tempo. Even with the yep. lead now, they're just not letting Bath have easy access to the paint, easy access to the posts. That's making a big difference on the defensive end. Looking to drive, they get underneath, a little mismatch underneath, shot, counted, and the foul. They switched off as Karis Willow came out. Gherkin went down to the bottom of the post there. Yeah, had a great find, great find from Oliver to Faust. Faust with a little head and shoulder fake, got Gherkin off her feet. You know, a chance to get the old fashioned three point play now. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw coming. That one is up and good. So now it's a one point ball game, 25 24 LB. A little spurt, a little 5-3 spurt here for the Wild Kittens. Got them back into a one-point ball game. And they're definitely going to have to keep on Irwin because now she's starting to feel it a little bit. She missed her first five, but she's knocked down the last two. Willow will go baseline, put it up and in. Good, strong offensive move. Put it on the floor well, used her body to keep Faust away from the basketball. There's a good finish out of the senior. Clark gets dribbled into the corner there, able to get out of it. Now she has it back. They've been a good good at breaking the trap. Yeah, Bath hasn't really turned it over against pressure. And like I said, Liberty Benton's not doing it. They've trapped more there than what they have most of the night. They get it back. Now three ball in the air. Good. <laughs> Nothing but net for Elena Oliver. And that's 27 Bath's, all. Sorry, Chris. Bath's first three of the night right there. They've been 0-3. They're not, they're not shooting a lot of them, but that was a big one right there to tie the ball game. And we got an offensive foul being called on Addie Crow. I didn't see what happened. I think she just kind of shuffled her feet through the hip a little bit. They're trying to run Irwin off of a baseline screen there against the face guard to try to, to, try to free her up. Addie Crow just kind of kicked her hip right in front of the official. Bath has it. Here's Elena Oliver. They get it cross over to Ann Oliver, now underneath to Faust. Faust will give back to Rachel Clark. Now back to Faust, it's poked away, picked up by Faith Clark. 5-23 remaining tie ball game here. Faith Clark has it. A little bit of a trap here. And we're going to get a timeout called by Coach Mauk right before they lost it. Yeah, I think he was hoping maybe for a reach right there. I was watching him. I think he gave that a little longer than I thought he would. Well, the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows a good ball game. 27-27. Wow, good one here as we knew it would be. Bath LB tied at 27 back after this on WSN. Back out of the jungle, 27-27 here at Paulding High School. Bath and Liberty Benton tied up with five minutes, 14 seconds to go. This game has been everything 
that it was advertised as. Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold with you here on WSN. Thank you so much for joining us. 9-2 third quarter for Liberty Benton. Got them back in the lead, and now Bass come out and take it off to they got themselves a 7-5 advantage here in the fourth to get this thing tied up. Bath with the basketball. Liberty Benton defense has definitely picked up here. And we're going to get a foul on Kylie Recker as she was coming in to try to intercept that pass and take it away from Elena Oliver. And that's a big, big factor in this ballgame right now, Chris. Seven. One team foul for Bath, seven for Liberty Benton. Bath shooting the rest of the way. First one is up and good. That one is good as well. So Bath lead is two. Bath has been pretty good from the line. Six of nine for the line right now. Four for four for Elena Oliver. You can correct me if I'm wrong too. I don't believe either team subbed here in the second half. I think I we've think seen so. the same ten on the floor the entire half. Three ball, two tall. Rebound will come down. And nice move there by Claire, Claire Faust to steal that one away. Let's see what Bath does here with a two-point lead and four and a half to go. Liberty Benton obviously playing a different de style of defense than they let him do. Back on her way in, and then they cross it out. I'll tell you what, a three ball here would be huge for Bath because that would shake off some of these defenders. Yeah, kind of pull, the, pull Liberty Benton out a little bit. I think it's been pretty fair to say, pretty easy to see. Faith Clark's not been in there for shooting. She's had a couple of looks from three. She hasn't even looked at the rim. She's there to play some great defense and get the ball to the post. And Bow got that one taken away. Good yep. job by Oliver fighting that out of uh, Rutgers hands. Underneath, let's see. Oh, double, yeah, yeah. double dribble. Trying to set the, up her move, kind of yep. caught herself. Fifth turnover of the half there for the Wild Kittens, ninth overall. Liberty Benton has not turned it over here in the second half, and this is a big possession for them under four. LB has it, Gherkin. Now top of the key to Willow, which you don't say very often. We're getting a foul, and that'll be on 33, Elena Oliver. I was that'll watching that second. matchup the whole time. Gherkin is having to work really, really hard to shake Oliver right now, and then she has been just on all over her. Trying to run her off screens, trying to get a little bit of dive cuts and pop back out. Nothing's been easy. Came through the key there with Wrecker. Now they feed underneath to Willow, and we're going to get a foul on Claire Faust. That will be three on her. No, Just the first on, on Faust, okay. yeah. Oliver's the one in the foul trouble. Yeah. 32.22. They feed underneath, Willow has it, turns, puts up a shot, no good, rebound comes down to Oliver, and she will clear it to Ann Oliver. Willow's gonna see a lot of those chippies in her dreams tonight if this doesn't go the Eagles' way. She's gotten some good looks down low, just has not been lucky and gotten a lot of shots to drop. She hasn't, three minutes to play here. Try to go high-low, shot is up and just blocked, that's Gherkin. Good anticipation yeah. there. About picked off the diagonal, but was stuck around it well enough to be able to knock that shot away at the rim. Gherkin uh, get, has seven inches on her. <laughs> Inbound pass was contested. Now we're going to foul on Irwin. And that'll and be more the free throws. Foul. Yeah. That'll be Irwin's second. Yeah, time getting a little short, under three yeah. minutes now. That one is good. Free throws brought to you by Lee Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima. Wapak and Delphus call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Second one, good as well. So what, Ann Oliver does not waste yep. any time with the basketball she on free not. throws. She's barely got that thing in her hands and it's going through. You got the rim. 10 seconds to do it and she doesn't yeah. need any of it. No. <laughs> Throw with the basketball. We'll give to Irwin. Irwin will go baseline now. Stop, pop, no good. Rebound tipped and we're going to get a foul on the rebound. And that's going to be on Kylie Recker. Yeah, we're going to call a push. Nice move by Irwin. Got a good runner from the baseline, just not able to get it to go. So that'll be 
a shooting foul again. And we're gonna get a timeout. So the foul is gonna be on Kylie Recker. You enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. Thank you so much for supporting WOSN and WTLW. We love bringing you the sports here. Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold with you, and uh, this is a good one. It is. 31-27. Can Bath hold off, do you think? Well, I think you, they're in the driver's seat. Yep. You know, the clock is in their favor. Fouls are in their favor. Um, they got the four-point lead at this point. They, they've been able to handle the ball really well. So I, at this point, everything is on Liberty Benton to force the issue defensively. They've got to get stops. When Bath misses, they have to get defensive rebounds. That's been tricky tonight. And then they've got to find a way to run quick hitters on the offensive end to get good looks and knock down shots. All right, so it'll be free throw coming here. Officials making sure everybody's set up properly. I don't know, Karis Willow might be, I don't know, they might, what they're doing there. He's looking at Karis Willow there. Free throw is coming here. That one is up and good. We'll do it again. And Oliver averaging 10.2 a game. Next one for Oliver. Good. He's got Shooting 15. in rhythm. And the bath seven of seven from the free throw line here in the fourth quarter when it matters. LB coming the other way. They're going to have to work quickly. 2.35 remaining. Cross court to Crow. Crow has a three already. Feet underneath to Willow. And Willow's going to get it out of bounds. And that'll be a turnover for Liberty Benton. A little too tall with the entry pass. And I think right now, you know, Coach Irwin knows he's got two scores here. Willow can get him some touches. But I think I'm forcing the ball to Lauren Girk in every possession. She's got to touch it every time down the floor here at the end, even if we've got to force the ball to get it into her hands. Bath gets it over the timeline. Ann Oliver has it. We'll hand off. Now they bounce pass it over to their point guard, Rachel Clark. 2.15 and counting here. Six point lead for Bath. Nice job by the bigs from Bath right there, being able to handle the pressure and help the two guards that have been working their tails off all night. Rachel Clark comes inside, then gives back out to Ann Oliver. Oliver working against Gherkin. Give to Elena Oliver. Works around a screen. Gets double teamed, they're gonna call a foul. They're gonna call down an Eddie Crow? They are. Looks like it, yeah. He's trying to tie her up, and Oliver just able to rip the ball away from her. That'll be the 10th team foul, which means they're shooting two every time now. And that is good, too. They're eight of eight here in the fourth quarter. Elena Oliver, last two trips, has been the Beneficiary of some foul shots. Next one rattles in and out. Rebound comes down to Liberty Benton. And we've got a quick timeout by Coach uh, Nate Irwin. It's a 30-second one, so we'll just keep this one right here. Brian, what are your thoughts here? What does Liberty Benton have to do now? Well, after that tough third quarter for, for the Wild Kittens, they were outscored 9-2. Liberty Benton took a lead into the third quarter. Um, kind of made a, you know, was making life hard, really difficult for Bath. They've been able to weather the storm. They're doing everything right now. They're playing great on the defensive end, limiting Liberty Benton's chances to one and done, coming down, taking care of the basketball. So right now, like I said, the last trip, I would think if I'm Coach Irwin, i got to find a way to force the ball into Lauren Gherkin. She has to get a touch. Every possession, well, however many there are left, 148 yep. down seven. She has to get touches. Then we're going to have to take chances. We're going to have to foul. Hope that they miss some free throws. We've got to make sure we're fouling the right people as soon as they touch. And then hopefully Bath does no better than one free throw every time. We can start knocking some shots down. All right. LB has it. They're running. Kylie Recker brings the basketball up. She'll give it over to Willow, top of the key. Willow will hand off to Irwin. Irwin will launch another big three. That one will hit the top of the backboard, and that will go to Bath. Irwin has drilled a couple of those from pretty deep and missed that one. Yeah, I and mean, she's we've said it, uh, I've said it enough times. She's had to work hard for every shot she's taken tonight. 
nothing's been easy. Bath able to clear it without getting fouled. They'll get it down to Rachel Clark now, minute 27 and counting. And at this point now, it'll just be a matter of when Coach Irwin wants the, the foul. And Coach Mock's going to call a timeout. Coach Irwin was begging for a five-second call right there. I don't think he was getting the count that he wanted, and Coach Mock probably getting a little nervous about it. <laughs> so he called that timeout. So if you want to watch us on line, you are streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download the Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. 100 bucks allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. Going to take this time out. The Finley Truck and RV scoreboard shows 34-27 in favor of Bath. Back after this. Back out here from Paulding on WOSN. Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold with you. It is Bath and Liberty Benton. This is a good one. Bath currently has a seven-point lead. In the waning moments, minute 19 remaining here on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. And Liberty Benton needs the ball really bad. They need, they need to foul. They need to get a quick turnover, but they don't have time to let this clock run and run and run. Still I think no Lauren foul. Gherkin was trying to get a touch foul there, just wasn't getting a call. Minute to play here. And they still haven't fouled. Now the five-second count is happening. Bass doing just enough to get themselves out of trouble. They've got just enough quickness to make hot life hard. He can't oh. trap them, can't stop them. The, the, everybody handles the ball well. They're all comfortable with the ball in their hands in this situation. It's a really tough team to try to chase around at the end of the ball game. And now Gherkin didn't get, still didn't get a foul. I think maybe we have uh, called off the dogs. Now they say foul, and the foul is going to come on Addy Crow, and that took about a minute off the clock. It was minute 19 when they inbound the ball. They're down to 31. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for sure, we're trying to force a, a five-second call if you're Liberty Benton. He, Coach Irwin thought he was close a couple of times, just couldn't get it done. Probably needed to foul just a little bit sooner. Yep. That is up and good for Elena Oliver. She's got 17 now, comes into the game averaging 12.2. Make that 18 as she makes both leads. Famous recipe chicken free throws. And five seconds. of six from the free throw line, seven of eight for the game, but five of six here in the fourth quarter with Baths only three. Three ball is good. Timeout for Coach Irwin. That was Lauren Gherkin who hit the three. She's 25% from three on the season. And uh, boy, she, uh, she let that one fly and picked it up. That was a good three for her. Yeah. You hope if you're an Eagles fan, it's not too little too late, but with as much time as we've got left, it's probably starting to feel like that at this point. 36-30, Bath leads, under a minute to play, and take this time out on WSN. Back out on WSN scoreboard tonight being presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Finley Truck and RV, call them at 419-422-9797. The scoreboard here is in favor of the Wild Kittens. They're up 36 to 30 over Liberty Benton with 20 seconds to go in this one. Inbound, trying to double team, Bath able to clear it out. And now a foul coming from Lauren Gherkin with 13.6. So that'll send Rachel Clark to the line. She's a 56% free throw shooter. And for everything Rachel Clark's done, handling the ball, been everywhere, been the engine of the offense. This is her chance to get her third point of the night. You would never guess as involved as she's been. She's been huge for the Wild Kittens all night long, keeping the offense going, breaking the press, finding people on the back line against that zone. She's made them go all night long. Next one, that's good as well. It's an eight-point lead for Bath. And if you're Bath right now, you just let them have it. Right. Stay away no from fouls. shooters. Don't foul anybody. And it's a turnover. And that is going to do it, folks, as Bath will defeat Liberty Benton 38-30. to And the Eagles go down to the Wild Kittens. 
We thought it would be a good basketball game, and we saw a great basketball game. Number three, Bath, will upset number one, Liberty Benton, by a score of 38 to 30 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Congratulations to Coach Mock and the Bath Wild Kittens. They are 20 and four on the season, and they will be headed to a district final against the winner of Bryan and St. Mary's. We're gonna take a timeout, come back with a quick post-game show after this on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, Bath defeats Liberty Benton by a score of 38 to 30. And it is Chris Malanga, Brian Arnold here with you on WOSN. Let's take a look at that bracket. Bath will advance now to the district final um, on Saturday. They will play the winner of the next game here at Paulding, Brian and St. Mary's, which will be on the Golden Bear Sports Network coming up. But uh, Bath victorious here, and uh, they did it with uh, a, good, a good defense and good offense and just all around good basketball. A great game plan. I mean, I, you know, I I am a Bath guy. I've been around. Coach Malk, unfortunately, has been around long enough that he was one of my teachers in junior high. Oh, We've man. both been around a long time. And you could tell it right there. You know, you don't win 460-some ball games, part of the, the most, one of the winningest, if not the winningest, program in the state of Ohio in girls basketball by not being able to come up with some wrinkles. And the way that they defended Riley Irwin and Lauren Girk and frustrated those two players all night long, and their other girls stepped up. They got some good good help from the guards. Clark and Clark both handled the ball well, played tremendous defense all night long. You know, all of the scoring for both teams came from four girls for both teams and just a little bit better on the bass side. But you got to be impressed with the way their bigs, the two Olivers and Faust, played against Karis Willow and Lauren Gerken inside, really rebounded well, battled all night long. You know, they should be really proud of how they did things. And for Liberty Benton, Karis Willow was a difference maker. She was what kept them in the ball game all night. She had a, a really good night for them. She ended up with nine points behind the ten from Riley Irwin. Um, and, you know, for nine points, she probably had nine or ten block yep. shots, and she probably came close to that with rebounds. You know, she did everything she could do to try to will the Eagles to a victory there tonight. All right, Brian Arnold and Chris Malanga signing off from WOSN. Our director, Tony Malanga, our cameras, Krista Bruner and Tristan Atkinson. And uh, for Paulding High School, I want to thank Chris Etzler here, our tournament manager. Again, your final score here, it is Bath 38, Liberty Benton 30. Have a great night, everybody.